Today we're going to talk about planes of motion. And no, not this kind. We're talking about when your body does certain uh, motions or exercises, how our body will move along certain planes. There's three of them we're going to talk about here, so let's get into these. Okay, so the first plane of motion is the sagittal plane. Uh, the way you can visualize this is if you took a large plate of glass and just divided my body left and right. So it's basically a vertical plane divides from left and right halves. And basically anything that moves parallel to that, that glass, it, uh, those motions would be in a sagittal uh, plane. So it, it's another way to imagine this is if you're in a slot canyon and you're walking in, they're just like so tight or a doorway where it's just like no room, just barely, almost touching your shoulders. Any exercises you could do in that position, we're just moving forward and backward. Uh, would fall in that area. So this would include motions of extension and flexion. So some examples of that, walking obviously, running. Um, some of the other ones are leg extensions, lunges, front raises, crunches, and curls. So these are your sagittal plane exercises where you can just do them moving forward and back, flexion and extension. Okay, the second plane of motion is the frontal plane. That's another vertical plane, so uh, just like with the sagittal, how it divides us left and right, if we were to turn it this way and have that plate of glass dividing us from the anterior and posterior. So basically it's parallel running this way, and any exercises we could do that move along that motion, like abduction and adduction of our limbs, that's going to fall within frontal uh, plane. Uh, it's kind of like, think of it like a crab, or if you're in that slot canyon, but you turn sideways, so you can do stuff moving left and right and, and side to side, but none of this forward and back motion. So some of the examples of exercises here would be jumping jacks, side lunges, strict pronated pull-ups, uh, lateral raises, and banded lateral walking with resistance. So those sort of things where you're moving like a crab are going to be that motion when it comes to the frontal plane. Okay, and the third plane of motion is the transverse or horizontal plane. They call it this because instead of a vertical plane, this one's horizontal, it's going to cut you at the waist basically. So you have your upper and lower half of your body. So anything you do that's in a twisting or rotational movement is going to fall in this category. So some of these activities would include Russian twists, shoulder, external and internal rotation, um, tennis return, which are swinging a tennis racket, a golf swing, um, a spinning backhand in martial arts, a discus throw. Another example of that is a figure skater doing like a triple axel spinning like that. So these are the ones where your body's twisting and turning, not going forward, straight or lateral side to side. So now you know that, so what? Who cares? Why does that matter? The reason it matters is because most people and most gyms and most exercises are in that sagittal plane. You know, I think we're doing curls or we're lunges or running, things like that. We're moving in that forward and back motion so often, flexion and extension. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing unless those other planes of motion are being neglected or we're weak there. So when it comes to athletic performance, if, we're not, if we don't have good lateral movement, uh, that could be a uh, disadvantage to us. As we look at these different planes of motion and movements, it's easy to start classifying movements as one of these three things, but the truth of the matter is, so many of these are mixed together, they're multi-planar uh, movements, like functional fitness type of thing. I mean, you think of uh, w w human beings, we're not like robots, you know, we don't move around like this. So the human body is not gonna move like a robot, you know, moving into segments and like some of these people that pop and lock and dance like that. Um, we're gonna be a lot more fluid, a lot more dynamic. If you watch and analyze the movement of athletes, you know, uh, it could be any sport, ballet dancers, gymnasts, divers. Just look how they're covering so many of these different planes. It's not just one simple motion, but this is all a combination of these different uh, planes of motion. So it's kind of fun once you uh, learn this to be able to look at people in the gym and see what types of exercises, what plane they're in, dominant in, um, and just analyze our own workout, what we do. Are, are there some of these areas or movements where we're really negligent, we don't ever train, we might be weak and uh, possibly get injured easier. So. That's why it's good to look at that and just like for overall wellness, make sure that we're not uh, completely negligent in any of these planes when we, when we exercise. Hey, thanks for watching. Feel free to check out the other videos I've got on this channel. There's a lot of different topics. Um, I hate to ask people to subscribe because things are getting so crazy. I've already got 60 followers. Things have gone viral, totally taken off. I can hardly leave the house now without people mobbing me like the paparazzi, but I'm willing to make that sacrifice for you. So we'll uh, keep making videos. Thanks for your support.